Welcome back to Scientix TV. Today we'll talk about the Back to School campaign and some of the very cool activities that Scientix is organizing in collaboration with the STEM Alliance. To start with, we have the Lenovo competition organized in collaboration with Microsoft and Intel on transforming waste into educational wonder. Make sure to watch the recording of the Lenovo webinar to discover the innovations behind the smarter circular approach and how to enter the competition. Scientix is proud to support the Empower Ed project, which seeks to create a thriving edtech ecosystem for better learning across the EU. To tell us more about the Empower Ed project, we spoke to Willem Schors from the Flemish Knowledge Center for Digital Education at the Flemish Ministry of Education, a core partner in the project. Empower Ed is a three-year project coordinated by European Schoolnet and funded by the European Commission. And with 11 partners, we are uh, working on a community where we work with uh, EdTech startups, EdTech companies, but also uh, the broader field and bring them in contact with policymakers um, to strengthen the, the EdTech communi community in Europe. So yeah, what, what we're doing is uh, work, trying to work all together to uh, find better solutions to make learning uh, more innovative and uh, work better for young learners. But EdTech is actually a very broad term that is about every technical sort of technological solution that will help learning in, in a broad sense of the word. It can be in the classroom but also outside of it. In Flanders we invested heavily in digitalization of our schools um, and now every pupil and every teacher has the necessary tools to work in an innovative may, way. Um, but we believe it's necessary to um, support them further um, to find more innovative solutions, not only to have the tools, but actually do something with it. Next to that, uh, we have a very vibrant attack community in Flanders. Um, and we are feeling that for us as a ministry and also for schools, it's new and, and unusual to work together with commercial partners. But it's also very interesting for us because we can learn a lot from each other. And we strongly believe that by working together, we can develop solutions that really work for, for the learners and um, will really help them to move forward. Teachers and educators across the world are part of the Scientix Ambassadors Teachers Panel. These 1,200 Scientix Ambassadors are the heart of the Scientix community. Now, you've been asking us how to join. This is your chance. Check the Scientix Ambassadors call on the Scientix portal. If I say particular accelerators, what comes to mind? A bit too difficult for primary or secondary education? Or maybe not? Let's hear from the team working on the Accelerated Teaching Massive, op massive Open Online course for teachers starting in October. Hello, my name is Michelina Partiga and I'm the course coordinator of Accelerate Your Teaching MOOC. From revealing secrets of the universe to daily application in the medical field, the world's 35,000 particle accelerators play a crucial role in our lives. So in this MOOC, we will learn how to bring this cutting edge science to your students, no matter which subject you teach. You will see that that, that is uh, interesting to learn about accelerators, about the physics behind, about the different things you can do with uh, accelerators. Of course, you can't explain everything for the students, but together you can discover and learn. You just have to pass that first threshold and then it gets less intimidating. The MOOC is really a collaboration between researchers, particle physicists, and researchers in, in education, and a lot of teachers too. Uh, I think the MOOC can be quite tangible for teachers. I think uh, it's becoming a quite nice mix of what is the science behind this, what is even the particle accelerator, what kind of applications are done, but also developing your own learning scenarios and sharing feedback on scenarios. I think the idea is mostly to get the students excited with, uh, with doing science. Uh, so in, in our uh, scenario, it's a, it's a kind of a game-based like thing. Um, the students, they are set in the role as scientists and they have to make decisions. 
And of course, those decisions will not be as good or as complex as the real scientists. But it will sort of have, they will get a taste of it and they will see that there's, there's actually more science than what you meet in the curricula. In a classroom setting, uh, you can learn about areas of science and it can sometimes feel to kids like they're just learning something from a book. But I know in my real life that science has applications, that it has real jobs, a whole range of jobs, engineering, um, theoretical physics, physics uh, and chemistry. All of these things are actual jobs where people are doing things. I'm excited by this MOOC because I want to be able to use the stories of those people, their actual jobs and what they do to bring to life the fundamental science that kids learn at school. So the bit I'm most excited with in this MOOC is the race to space game, where students and indeed the teacher will get a chance to pretend that you've gone into outer space, uh, but you happen to have a very useful neutron machine in your space rocket. Um, what it means is that we're actually using some simulated data to imagine using neutrons to find out the answer to a question. So hurry up and register. Let's turn inspiration into transformative education. Thank you very much. Registrations are now open to the Accelerating Teaching MOOC in collaboration with Scientix. And remember, completing MOOCs is a requirement to become a Scientix ambassador. Now let's join Isidora for a new fun STEM experiment to do in class. Isidora, I hear it's uh, quite colorful this week. Yes, I get that. As the new school year has started and we're preparing for the gloomy colors of fall, I'm going to show you how to make your classroom more fun and bright place. So we're going to make a DEI lava lamp. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a beaker, vegetable oil, water, food coloring, and effervescent tablets. You can use any effervescent tablet. We're going to use aspirin today, but you can use vitamin C. Just make sure it doesn't have any additional coloring inside. So this is how we are going to do it. First, you're going to put oil into the beaker. You should fill in most of the beaker, so the ratio is three to one. Three parts oil, one part water. Now we're going to add some water and you will see that water actually went to the bottom of the beaker. It is because oil is less dense than water, so it's less heavy, so it's pushing water to the bottom. Then we're going to add food coloring. As food coloring is also water-based, it will behave as water, so it will as well fall to the end, to the bottom of the beaker. As you can see here, we have th two more beakers. We will add food coloring to each. And after that, we will add some effervescent tablets inside. So we will uh, take the effervescent tablet, break it. We will add it here to our previously prepared two other. You should break them into three to four pieces so we can have a more balanced, nice reaction of it all. The funnest fun is the safest fun, so we will put on the goggles and add the effervescent tablet into our beakers. And look, the magic happens. How does it work? To make a successful lava lamp, you need to keep in mind two scientific principles, density and polarity. Density is a measurement of how compact the substance is, which means how much it fits into a certain amount of space, the beaker. As you see in the beginning, oil is less dense than water, so you can see it floating at the top. But the combination of water and gas, it is less dense than oil, so the gas is pushing the water to the top at the top, the gas bubbles pop and escape into the air, allowing the dense water to sink back to the bottom. In addition, polarity is a quality of having two oppositely charged poles, which means 
that the effervescent tablet reacts to the water to produce carbon dioxide gas that stick to the water droplets. On the other side, oil molecules are nonpolar, so they don't have neither positive nor negative charge, and they're not attracted to water molecules at all. This is why oil and water don't mix. Colorful, fun, and educational. What more do you like? Well, do you have any experiments that you would like to show to your colleagues? Make sure to fill in the, the form in the description or on social media and tell us what you would like to do and maybe get a chance to, to have your experiment featured in upcoming Scientix TV episode. I hope you enjoyed today's experiment. I am Isidora and this is Science in Action. See you next time on Scientix TV. The Back to School campaign is all about ensuring that students get first-hand experience on STEM careers. One of the ways of doing this is by bringing STEM professionals into the class. We talk to our STEM careers advisors to share their experiences on bringing STEM professionals into the classroom. I invited some experts to my school. Uh, they run some workshops, for example, last year we uh, invited uh, three different experts and they gave image processing uh, lessons blockchain and after that we organized QA sessions. The students ask some questions. In the last uh, year of the high school, the students uh, go go some organizations for internship. They have three, three days internship and they come to school only two days and it is very important for career guidance because uh, they experience new things, they, uh, they meet with engineers, uh, coders, etc. and it is very beneficial for them. They were very happy to be involved in this such kind of uh, events. They were online uh, with the scientists, but also in presence with uh, some experts from uh, the university and the research academic uh, field. And so their reaction was uh, enthusiastic uh, for my students, but also for, uh, for parents, for family. Uh, they were so curious, they asked a lot about uh, the lives that uh, those professionals uh, uh, conduct uh, the kind of a career and the job uh, pathway they follow with the to, to become what they were. Firstly, he has to sparkle our students' interest. His profession has to leverage their connections. Secondly, his profession has to be aligned with STEM aspects. And lastly, he has to engage students either in a hands-on activity or to talk about his challenges in his uh, profession so that students would be highly interested. I try to involve them as uh, much as possible. I try to give them uh, some instructions before the lesson. I give them uh, the lesson plan uh, so they can have a look and they can suggest some things that can maybe can change and uh, improve the lesson plan before the implementation. Teachers may find useful to check for uh, some uh, experts uh, in the surroundings to let the students to meet them uh, in, the, in their workplace. Because uh, in my opinion, this is a really important aspect that they should take into account. My strongest advice for uh, teachers is to organize um, STEM uh, career events because it's very important for the students. Do not be afraid of organizing an event because students will love it uh, in any way. Also, uh, events based on real life situations are very helpful for students because they can uh, understand more of these jobs and they can relate to their uh, daily life. Another way to help your students discover how cool STEM jobs are is to join the October Future Career Snippets. These chats for students are organized by the SEER project in collaboration with the EU STEM Coalition and the STEM Alliance. Over two days, students can discover exciting career prospects. They can find out about what makes basically STEM experts tick. Make sure to keep an eye on the Scientix portal and social media for more information. Our episode next month will do a deep dive in the world of artificial intelligence in education. We want to know your questions on AI. Share them through the comments to this video. 
tell us your fears, your hopes, your thoughts uh, on AI. We will be addressing your comments and questions with experts on AI. So thank you for joining. This is Scientix TV, where we look at the world through STEM glasses. See you next time. So as you saw, this back to school campaign is full of activities you can join. We have the Lenovo competition. There's an online course on sustainability for action. We have the accelerated teaching MOOC in collaboration with Scientix. And we have the career snippets, the chats for students to get to meet STEM professionals. And of course, we have the Scientix ambassadors teachers call.